In business, you get used to wearing a lot of hats, but that doesn't mean they're all gonna fit. Enter the consultant. In today's episode, we're going to Woburn, Massachusetts, where life is one big party. But first, we're gonna talk to the man credited with saving the commercial airline industry. This is the Language of Business with Greg Stoller. Consultants are often maligned as being expensive hired guns that deal with your company at an arm's length. But on the flip side, you won't be a successful entrepreneur without knowledge in a critical business specialty. John Thomas is a managing director at LEK Consulting and has nearly a quarter century of experience as a strategy expert. His specialty is the aviation industry, and he's been credited by the Boston Globe as saving the commercial airline industry. John, welcome to the Thank Language you, of Business. Great to be here. So let's start with the obvious question. What did you do that saved the commercial airline industry? Really two things. Um, the first thing is that we were instrumental in a lot of the consolidation that's happened in the industry. Uh, that started about six years ago with the merger between Delta and Northwest, obviously followed by the merger between United and Continental, and most recently the merger between American and, and uh, US Airways. But that consolidation has taken a lot of the excess capacity out of the industry that was unprofitable for the industry. So that was the first thing. The second thing is we introduced uh, ancillary revenues to the, uh, to the airline industry. For the person on the street, that is bag fees. So I apologize for the bag fees. But bag fees and all of the other add-ons that can, let's say, enhance your travel experience now accounts for about $12 billion of highly lucrative revenue to the US airline industry each year. Yeah. Enhancing the experience for the airline companies or for the passengers? Uh, for both. Historically, when the airlines ate the full cost of carrying the bags, it was regarded as a cost center. And so the airlines, because they didn't have any spare cash, wouldn't invest in their bag technology. Now that they charge for bags and bags have now turned into a profit center, it's actually rational for them to invest in their technology. With business dynamics changing so quickly, how do you change your consulting approaches both on a short-term and a long-term basis? Well, on a short-term basis, it's very tactical. I mean, we're, we're in the business of solving problems for our clients. Um, so that could be examples of introducing a new product, uh, helping them distribute their product better, improving on their op operational performance, et cetera. So an issue will happen. I mean, we've got a good example where we're talking to an airline at the moment where they had an operational issue uh, that caused a lot of flight cancellations in December. It's an airline in a different geography. Um, and they got hit with a three million dollar fine for that dislocation and they want us to come in and say what can we learn from the mistakes that we had through that dislocation. So sort of lots of short-term issues. On the longer-term issues um, a lot of that relates to uh, companies that see their market share declining and they get us to come in and say well look we think we need to change our business model. Uh, what's happening in the marketplace? You know what are the different customer segments want? How are competitors uh, meeting the needs of those customer segments? Segments, how should we be adapting our business model to those? And I, a good example in the airline industry, if you think back about five years ago, was you know the onslaught of the low-cost carriers, uh, and everyone kept saying, well, look, you know the legacy carriers are doomed; uh, only low-cost carriers will survive. And a lot of airlines were bringing us in, mind you, they were, uh, they were in Chapter 11 at the time, saying, when we come out of Chapter 11, how should our business model change to allow us to be more competitive against the low-cost carriers? How about if you're consulting to an entrepreneur as opposed to an established company? There's a lot of things that uh, an entrepreneur uh, needs sort of when they're setting up a company. Firstly, it's just sort of a broader skill set. You know, lots of entrepreneurs have a great sort of, you know, they'll bring a new product or bring a new technology to market. That's only part of the issue. It's how do I sell it? How do I price it? Uh, do I need to partner with an existing player? So there's a lot of other issues where we can help sort of bring that capability and skill set. So that's the first one. The second one is, Small companies just don't have a lot of resources and you may have um, a short-term need just to bring in uh, capability to help you. A good example is if you're a small company and you acquire another company, uh, I need, I need short-term capability to integrate that, uh, the acquired company into my existing company. So that's, a, that's another example. And then finally, in terms of the entrepreneurs, one of the things that we do a lot of is, uh, is actually in, the, in, in helping them develop their business plan. So what market 
market does this address? How can you grow the revenues of your concept or your product? Uh, what are the economics as you grow the, the product over the next couple of years? But importantly, put that into a business plan that they can then take to uh, either a private equity firm or to their, uh, to their banks, etc. And because it's sort of got our stamp of approval on it, they actually have a much easier job in terms of raising finance for their business plan than if they sort of just go to a private equity firm by themselves. John, you've been consulting for 25 years to your clients, but yet they've been managing their own companies for 25 years. Do you think over time they'll be able to catch up to you in terms of their industry knowledge? Uh, Greg, they've caught up and gone well, <laughs> well beyond. Uh, but I mean, seriously, the notion of uh, bringing consultants in purely for the skill set is just one, one aspect. I mean, a company will be going through a decision-making process and they may have reached loggerheads where one part of the organization has a particular view and the other has a diametrically opposed view. And it's very difficult for a CEO or a board to sort of act as the arbiter between the two divisions. So, I mean, uh, call us the four guys, but I mean, it's a very valid role that we come in is we're independent, we don't bring any baggage, let us sort of in the cold, harsh reality of the day, analyze the situation and work out what is the best approach forward, which, which uh, may not necessarily make everyone happy, but we think is the right for the, for the organization. That's the first one. Second one is, um, a lot of our clients are making sort of make or break uh, decisions and we think good corporate governance uh, but also the fiduciary uh, responsibility of directors is to bring in a third party to say look I, it's not that I don't trust management management have done a great job but boy this is a big decision I'd really like someone else just to give me their opinion as to as to whether we're heading in the right direction and I think the third aspect is because we're not in the thick of it we've got the luxury of sort of we're unencumbered where we can sort of sit back and say, look, are there any storm clouds coming that are going to impact our clients? And we should be taking ideas to them and saying, this is how you can alleviate what could happen from the storm cloud. And in fact, it's funny, a lot of our clients call us the idea guys, because whenever we meet with them, they're sort of saying, okay, well, I wouldn't be satisfied unless right. you bought me some new <laughs> ideas. So, I mean, I mean, it's interesting. It's, it's a good discipline for us because we can't rest on our laurels of sort of helping them in the past. We've sort of, they, they sort of only judge just on the latest ideas that we bring them. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Craig. John Thomas, Managing Director at LEK Consulting. If you can't promote from within, you'll have to begin hiring new blood. But can you and should you do it on your own? Coming up next on The Language of Business.